Today on CityCast Boise, Boise renters can't seem to get a break, but change could be coming. The Idaho Statesman's Ian Max Stevenson is here to tell us about a proposal that could improve things for those of us who aren't homeowners. But do the protections go far enough, and how do landlords feel about it? It's Wednesday, August 2nd. I'm Emma Arnold, and this is what Boise's talking about. Hi, Ian. Welcome back. Hey, Emma. So what changes are Boise's leaders proposing to try and protect renters here? So the Boise City Council is proposing to pass an ordinance to help renters um, through four policy changes. The first would add language prohibiting retaliation against renters. This is an effort to allow renters to do things like ask for maintenance or raise other concerns with their landlord without the fear of it coming back and biting them somehow. The second would require landlords to give new tenants a document explaining their rights and responsibilities. City officials have said that they would create such a document and then basically expect landlords to give their tenants the link to this um, document. This would be sort of like the notices that a lot of people get from their landlord if you live in an older building uh, about lead, informing you about uh, the dangers of lead paint and the like. That's required by the EPA. The third provision would expand the city's non-discrimination rules to include no source of income discrimination. The idea here would be for landlords to have to treat income from child support or a voucher program, the same as income from a job. And the last provision has to do with situations where a landlord decides to demolish a building, perhaps to build a larger apartment building. In those cases, landlords would be required, except in a few specific cases, to give tenants their full security deposits back. So the idea here is that even if a tenant uh, perhaps damaged a wall or something else in the unit that generally would require fixing and some maintenance that a landlord might deduct from your security deposit for, uh, because the building's going to be deduct, uh, destroyed in the future, that means that that sort of maintenance isn't necessary. And so you should get your full security deposit back is the thinking there. So there are sort of these are the various policies that the city is considering implementing at the moment. Seems reasonable. So what did the council members have to say about these provisions? So overall, I think council members seemed pretty supportive of the proposals. Um, though there may be some disagreement about some of the specifics when it comes back to the council down the road. Uh, For instance, council member Patrick Bajent said that he did not think gift income should be included in the non-discrimination provision because he thinks that it's reasonable for a landlord to have questions about a person's ability to pay rent if they're relying on money from a gift to, to pay that rent. He also said that he thought on the list of non-discrimination items, he thought that small business income should be included there because he thinks it can be hard for small business owners to secure loans and get other types of funding. And so he thought small business owners should have some more protections. But we'll, I think we'll see down the road whether there are other council members who have issues with some of the other provisions too. Is this common? Have other cities passed these types of protections? Like, is there a city Boise was looking to for guidance on this? So, um, the, the mayor's housing advisor said that she's been looking around the region at different changes and different policies that other places have implemented. And that's definitely the case that I think coming out of COVID when there were some protections for renters around evictions and there was some uh, emergency funding for rental assistance, since a lot of those things have ended in recent months, I think a lot of cities are looking to make changes to try to help renters. So for instance, Tacoma, Washington recently passed some new protections and requiring extended notice before rent increases and caps on late fees. Uh, Eugene, Oregon has also passed some protections um, like capping security deposits and the like and requiring some relocation assistance. And L.A., uh, big cities like that have also limited types of evictions further. Um, So I think given the really high rents around the country in recent years as well, a lot of communities have considered ways to protect renters who tend to be lower income than homeowners. So has the city implemented other laws aimed at protecting tenants in the past, or is this a first? So in 2019, Boise capped rental application fees at $30. This was a proposal from 
former council member Lisa Sanchez. So that was a that was a significant uh, new policy that came through a couple of years ago. And then last year, Sanchez also proposed to provision to limit uh, late fees that landlords charge, basically to have a maximum or have some sort of way to limit the amount that they can charge on a late fee. But instead of a city ordinance, a bill actually ended up passing the state legislature last session that requires rental late fees to be, quote unquote, reasonable and stated in in your lease agreement. So that new regu- regulation actually became effect er, on July 1st of this year. So there also has been a sharp rise in eviction court hearings in Ada County this year and federally funded, as I mentioned, um, emergency rental assistance begun during the pandemic early this summer. Um has has ended, has been depleted. Um, so I think amongst rental advocates, there's concern about the challenges that tenants face. So are there any protections that the city was not able to implement? Yes. So I think the big one, and this is a thing you hear from a lot of tenant advocates, not just in Boise, but around the country, is some sort of rent control or rent stabilization, trying to find ways to actually cap how much rent can be increased on a given property. Idaho law forbids cities from capping rents in that way. Some states have those sorts of protections, um, places like California and New York, but you can't do that in Idaho. So if a city council wants to try and protect renters, they have to do so by other means. So as a reporter on this issue, have you heard from renters or landlords in Boise about whether they like this? Like any idea if this is something people want? Does it go far enough? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I have not yet heard from renter advocates about this. The city says that they did a lot of outreach to tenant groups as well as landlord groups to sort of see how they felt about various provisions and to get feedback on them. I think um, going forward, this is going to come back to the city council for a public hearing, and that'll be an opportunity for members of the public to talk about whether they like certain provisions or whether they don't. And so I think that'll be a good opportunity to hear from renters about whether they think these protections will help them, whether the things that have been left out that they still want to see, and then we'll see how the council responds to that. So what's next? When might these changes go into effect? So they'll come back to a public hearing sometime after the city council summer recess, so likely in um, a couple of months. And then if they pass an ordinance, if they get something together um, that they can all agree on, then it'll likely go into effect in January of next year. So what about landlords? Are you are they going to push back on this? Have you heard anything from them? Like, do you think that they'll that they'll be into this or, or do you think there'll be some pushback? I think um, I think we're likely to hear some pushback from landlords already during the city's presentation on this. They talked a bit about some resistance from landlords or just concerns that, for instance, um, one of the provisions proposed would require require that landlords inform their renters, or their the, you know the people renting properties, renting their property of their rights and responsibilities. And I think some landlords were concerned. Oh, am I going to have to create that document? Am I going to have to um, you know, are there going to be responsibilities for me to create this document and send it out to them? The city, though, has proposed to create that document themselves, and the landlords would just have to like link to it or print it out and give it to their tenants. And so um, I think the thinking there is that hopefully that'll assuage some of the concern that landlords had about what the responsibility will be. But um, I think we're likely to hear some more concerns um, about this effect that could this could have, especially on sort of small operation landlords. Um, and I think those concerns we'll hear likely at the public hearing. Well, Ian, thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing whether this uh, passes or not. We'll see. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me. And before you go, some less good news for renters. The Idaho Statesman is reporting that new apartment construction permits in the Boise area dropped by two thirds this last year citing rising material and land costs, as well as a shortage of construction labor and increasing interest rates, developers are pulling back, shelving existing projects and putting new plans on hold. This uncertainty could potentially worsen our housing shortage and raise rental prices even more. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, check out our website for online guides to Boise and more. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more local stories from around the city. Bye. You and I are just saying (laughs) words. (laughs) 